You get taken to the courthouse. Yeah. What are your charges? So they charge me with conspiracy to distribute 3,000, 3,000 to 8,000 um, pounds of marijuana. So because that's your charges. Conspiracy case. And they did compensate some, but they wasn't able to figure out exactly how much. So basically they just calculated based on what they had in the time. They did an estimate of what they thought transpired. Did you say 3,000 to 8,000? Yeah. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Yes, yes, three to 8,000. Okay. Are you, I mean, you sound like you're obviously extremely intelligent, even as a young man. Did you put money to the side for a rainy day? At the time that they raid your place, you know they're on me. It's only a matter of time. So I got a question even before you, I ask you that. Did you stay in the game at that point or did you wash your hands and say, look, I got money in the bank, let me keep it moving? Of course not, I was young, I stayed in the game. I didn't stop. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Because, and to my defense, to, to my younger, immature self, I one, didn't understand federal law. Two, I didn't understand conspiracy. I thought I had to be caught doing something. And three, I, I downplayed the significance of weed because normal circumstances, weed isn't significant. It just gets really significant when you're talking about thousands and thousands of pounds. Exactly. Then, then it's a whole different thing. But I didn't make that connection, you know, then, right? So I'm like, oh, it's just weed, whatever. And then, too, when you've been doing something for so long, whether it's legal or not, once something becomes normal to you, it really becomes normal. So for me, it's just like... Like, whatever, right? So since even after that, I had flew to Tampa and I had, you know, brought money with me and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I mean, I wasn't reckless, but at the same time, it was just like, oh, the way I looked at it is, damn, they try to catch me, they didn't find nothing, I'm good. That's how I look at <laughs> Oh, my goodness. This is, this is a very common story. But did you put money away for a rainy day? Was you able to have that money on hand for a paid lawyer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I hired a lawyer, and then they, they gave me a bond of fifty thousand. But the thing with federal bonds is not you can't use the bail bonds. You have to put up the entire fifteen cash, up, you know, all the whole thing up. So um, and then you know I, I was able to post bond because when they indicted me, <laughs> part of part of the game that they play is that they wanna they wanna motivate you is the word I'll use to get you to talk by the time they get you where they want you to be at. Mm -hmm. So what they do is that they call it in the system. They call it diesel therapy. So when they indicted me in Vegas, usually if they really want to just, if it's a white collar crime, they'll get you from Vegas to, to Florida. They'll put you on Con Air, which is a real thing, and they'll fly you to whatever state you got to be in and they'll handle it. For me, <laughs> they gave me the long route. So they put me on a bus from Vegas to California, and then from California on a plane to Oklahoma. And basically I stopped damn near at every county jail between Oklahoma <laughs> <laughs> and Tampa. So by the time they get you there, like you don't lost 50, 60 pounds. <laughs> you, 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 you sleeping in these cells. You around a whole bunch of crazy motherfuckers. You, you, by the time you just like, your brain is so fucked up. You don't know what day you're coming or going. Like you're disorientated. It's crazy. Especially if you've never been in prison before. You, this is just like a uh, pure culture shock. So their trick was they told the judge I was a flight risk. So that's how they was get the judge to revoke and not give me a bond. So basically, I would have had to stay in jail the whole time. But once I got to Florida, they then, all my code, by the time I got to Florida, because it took me so long, all my co-defendants had already copped out and just pretty guilty. So by the time I got there, I just pleaded guilty and they said, okay, he's not fly rich no more. And they sent me my sentencing date. How much time did you get? Uh, 51 months. Okay, I'm not great with okay, math. Right, right under five years. Right, right under five years. Okay. Federal time, time a month. That's, that's what I'm You're right under five months. You go into the system. It's your first time ever in the system. Yeah. Talk to me, and you're in the feds, correct? Yeah. Talk to me, number one, how did you not, or did you, get involved in the whole prison culture or did you immediately look at it like, look, well, you know, I'm here. I got five years. I could have done much longer. 
I need to make this time work for me. Like, what was your mindset at 23, 24 years old entering that system? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think there's a level that everyone is going to be in a prison culture when you're in prison. Like, there's a level that, you know, there's, it's like a 100% opt-in type of situation. <laughs> so, you know, that, that, that is a part of it. But you don't have to make it, um, what's the word? You, you, don't, you don't have to get to the point in it that you make that your career. You can kind of still stay in your own lane. And there's some, some guys where they ain't coming home. So they have a different mentality and different mindset than somebody who has five years or 10 years or 15 years there. So, you know, um, when I say like there's some level that you, that you have to opt in, for example, prison politics, like there's no, whether you have 60 days or whether you have a life sentence, we're all in the prison politics, particularly on the West Coast. So all the blacks stay with the blacks, the blacks eat at certain tables, you don't associate with no snitches, you don't associate with child molesters, you don't associate with any other races, you don't owe debts to other races. If one black has an issue, all blacks have an issue. Like there's no, there's no question about that. You have to, that's, that's just how it's running there, right? So that's the politics side. But then it can go above and beyond that if, you know, there's guys in there where they doing the same shit as on the street, hustling and doing the same stuff in the street, whether you're getting contraband in and all other kind of stuff, you don't have to go that far with it, right? You kind of stay out of that and just stay in your lane and do your thing that way. So. Um, I was more of the latter. Well, part of prison politics that we had riots and the blacks ride, you ride with the blacks, period. It doesn't matter who did it or why they did it, we all ride together. That's just how it is. So that happened several times. But as far as getting involved in, you know, the drugs and the other contraband and stuff like that, you'd be like, nah, I'm, I'm cool on that, right? So, and that's, and that's fine. So that's really how I did, how I did my time. And um, I really focused my time to, you know, get healthy um, and, and, you know, mind, body, and spirit, and I read a lot, I consumed a lot of information, I read anything I could get my hands on, and I did every day planning for my day out, is how I did my time, and, and it was the only thing that kept me from going crazy, because it's, I, I remember when I first got in, like, I couldn't even fathom, because when you're 22, 23, you're not thinking five years out, or what your life is looking like five years out, I knew I wasn't, so when you're there, and they say, you're not going to leave this environment until this date, and you're looking forward, you can't even fathom, like, what day is this? <laughs> so it's, just, it's just hard to wrap your brain around that, particularly when you're young, and particularly when you're used to living life on your own terms, to be in a situation where you are not in control. You're not in control when the lights turn on. You're not in control when the lights turn off. You're not even in control of when you're fed. You're not in control of when you can shower. So it's just, it's just in a very different um, environment that you have to adjust to. But what I will say, what I did learn is that I respect the human's ability to adjust to any situation that you're in. Yep. As crazy as it sounds, when you think about something, and a lot of times, a lot of that fear may prevent us from exploring and going out on new things or uh, trying things or taking certain risks. Um, not necessarily legal risk, but even starting a business or leaving your, your comfortable job or whatever. Don't underestimate your ability to adjust because you will adjust. And then you'll look back and be like, oh, I, didn't, I don't even know why this was such a roadblock for me in the first place. Because I think that's probably one of our greatest superpowers as people, particularly black people, is that we have an, an, an un, uncanny ability to adjust to pretty much any situation or circumstances that we're in. And in most cases, we drive we, 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 as human beings, definitely as black people, we will adjust, we will adapt. It does not matter what situation you are in, as uncomfortable as it may seem, give yourself a level of time, a period of time rather, and you will adapt to whatever situation you're in. So that is so true. And it's such a great gem that you pointed out because there's entrepreneurs right now afraid to take that leap, bet on themselves because they might have a great idea, but they don't necessarily know the industry that right. much. And they're afraid thinking that I'm never gonna learn it. And yeah. if what they don't know is most successful entrepreneurs, you kind of are building the plane as it's flying. Yeah, 100%. It, it's, it's just what comes with this territory. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. 
If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.